okay so hello everyone uh, welcome to avlsi lecture number 9 session number part 3 so today we are going to introduce the concept of diode connected mosfet and briefly we will discuss about the common source amplifier with nmos diode connected load so let us begin so what is a diode connected mosfet and what's the need of it now we know that it's very difficult to fabricate a tightly controlled or a reasonable size register on a silicon chip so it is desirable to replace a load register a physical register with a mos device so your mosfet can operate as a small single register you know one option is to operate the mosfet in the triode region second option is ki mosfet can operate as a small single register if its gate and drain terminal are sorted so we call this as a diode connected mosfet it behaves as a two terminal device now so let's see what we have done uh, this is called as nmos diode connected so your gate and drain terminal are sorted together that means this mosfet will always be in saturation similarly this is my pmos diode connected mosfet okay so your its gate and drain terminal is sorted together again this means that your pmos device will always work in the saturation region fine noted down this nmos diode connected and pmos diode connected so your mosfet always operates in saturation we have seen this point before we have mentioned this point before that your mosfet always behaves in the saturation region when its gate and drain terminal are sorted whenever vgd is less than or equal to vth then we say that your mosfet operates in the saturation region and in this case it's happening now and we have also derived this before you might I, i don't know it was covered in lecture number 4 uh, or 5 i don't remember exactly which one but uh, we have derived the expression of rx you know the uh, impedance seen at one terminal uh, from the drain terminal uh, right uh, we have derived this diode connected load also where it's uh, you know as you can see the body terminal is connected to the ground and source terminal is also connected to the ground so vsb body effect is not present fine so the rx formula over here for the pmos diode connected load or your nmos diode connected load was equal to when lambda is equal to non zero was rx was equal to ro parallel to 1 upon gm so you can refer that particular se lecture session and uh, you can check it out in detail we have derived this before and when lambda is equal to zero that means ro will disappear so rx will be 1 upon gm directly and also i think this we have not derived the lower one but you can try it out on the similar lines so over here what we have done is we have connected your uh, vdd to the drain terminal of nmos diode connected load and now we are checking at the source terminal now we when we check at the source terminal your source voltage and your body voltage are not at the same potential earlier it was but now we have connected vdd to the drain terminal and uh, we are checking the equivalent resistance at the source terminal so vsb will not be not be equal to zero right that means it is suffering from body effect that means your gmb term will come and similarly ry uh, you know is the resistance seen between the uh, you know the terminals uh, source terminal when gate and drain are sorted so yes it's also suffering from body effect because source terminal is not connected to vdd and the body terminal is connected connected to vdd so vsb is not equal to zero so we can easily derive and i mean we have derived for two terminal i mean for this case for this case you can derive it on your own or you can directly remember the result so rx will be given by ro parallel to 1 upon gm parallel to 1 upon gmb because vsb is not equal to zero so we can approximately write i mean approximately you know we can write the same expression as rx is equal to 1 upon gm plus gmb plus 1 upon ro only so this means same only these two equation means same and uh, when lambda is equal to 0 that, that means ro term will will be disappearing we can write rx is equal to 1 upon gm parallel to 1 upon gmb or else we can write it as rx is equal to 1 upon gm plus gmb fine so uh, this result will come in handy so you can take a print screen of this remember this uh, we can treat it as rx only instead of ry because the formula will remain the same so you can take a print screen of this this will come in handy for the derivation for the diode connected load 
okay so let's proceed ahead yeah so let us see what are the problems faced in the common source amplifier with triode and current source load so let us begin with the common source amplifier with resistor as a load so we have seen that as a resistor as a load the gain av is was given by minus gm into rd parallel to ro correct so that means if i increase the value of rd my gain will increase but if i increase the value of rd i will have a high power dissipation and more silicon area right and also my voltage gain increases or decreases with the input my voltage gain is not constant which will lead to non linearity we have seen this point before now let us compare uh, uh you know pmos uh, i mean common source amplifier with pmos as a current source and uh, common source amplifier with pmos as a triode load what are the problems so for both common source load and uh, and a current source load and triode load biasing circuit is required for m2 so in this case your biasing is required for m2 and here also we required a biasing circuit for uh, a vb actually we have a non linearity in the gain that means in both current source load and the triode load your gain increases or decreases with the signal amplitude that means your gain is not a constant it will lead to non linearity so these are the problems commonly faced by the current source load and the triode load so let's see what's the solution for it so the solution over here is that your common source amplifier with nmos diode connected load right so this is my nmos diode connected load as you can see its gate and drain terminal is sorted together right and connected to vdd so uh, this is my common source amplifier with nmos diode connected load now let's just verify whether the m1 transistor is suffering from body effect yes or no m1 transistor suffers from body effect you can type your answers in the meeting chat yes or no m1 will not suffer from body effect at all because its gate terminal uh, i mean its its body terminal is connected to the ground and its source terminal is also connected to the ground what about m2 m2 the source terminal is connected to you know not connected to ground but the body terminal of m2 is always connected to the ground so yes m2 is suffering from body effect okay here m1 is called as a driver mosfet driver nmos and m2 is called as the load you know we call it as a nmos diode connected load because of its connection between the gate and uh you know thing so what we have written over here m2 suffers from body effect whereas m1 doesn't suffer from body effect okay here m1 transistor is biased in the saturation region right and the gate terminal and drain terminal are sorted together fine so let's see in detail uh, i mean in in uh, quite a bit of details that in integrated circuit your bulk or your substrate terminal is connected to the ground for nmos transistors okay so here it is you know so, uh, you know your body 2 and source 2 are not at the same potential whereas for m1 your source 1 and are at the same potential right so for m2 vsb is not equal to 0 for m1 uh, your vsb is equal to 0 so what are we doing is we are separating the two mosfets right and i mean that's the way we are doing it so m2 is separated m1 is separated and we are finding the equivalent resistance seen from this terminal from the source 2 terminal rx okay so that is what we are finding so let's find this rx value and i mean we will stop the session then right so let's find the impedance rx seen into the source terminal of m2 first fine so let's begin yeah so we will only draw the small signal model for m2 transistor m2 load transistor so the small signal model will look something like this we have the gate terminal and the gate drain terminal connected together uh, a uh, well source terminal is where we apply the external voltage vx and ix right we put the entire small signal model inside the box 
between the drain and source we have gm we have this gm into vgs2 actually it should be gm2 into vgs2 then we have ro2 then we have gmb2 and vbs2 okay we have seen this before and its gate terminal and drain terminal are tied together and what do we do then we apply a test source vx test source at the out i mean at the source terminal and pass the current ix and now we have to calculate rx is equal to vx upon ix actually we have done this for this transistor it's just a revision for you all so for this transistor your vsb is not equal to 0 and if we if we calculate the equivalent resistance rx it will be you know basically ro2 parallel to 1 upon gm2 parallel to 1 upon gmb2 so let's let's see it anyway i mean let's derive it anyway no problem at all so we will quickly finish it off in 2 minutes fine so now uh, over here if you see carefully the voltage vx positive is over here negative is towards the ground right so that means your voltage vx is parallel to ro2 and we are considering that the current flowing into the ro2 it's going towards the ground terminal right so your current flowing through ro2 will be vx upon ro2 fine with that so we have to find rx actually that means vx upon ix value now from the circuit can we say that vgs2 is equal to minus vx yes because as you can see the polarity of vgs2 negative terminal is connected to source 1 and vx polarity positive terminal is connected to source 1 that means they are connected in parallel because gate is also connected to the ground okay so we can say that vgs2 is equal to minus of vx also you uh, you see that vgs2 we have seen earlier that vgs2 and vbs2 are are, are in parallel so if vgs2 is minus vx uh, vbs2 are all, also the same actually vbs2 is also equal to minus vx now what do we do now we apply the kcl at the drain 2 node so when we apply the kcl to the drain 2 node we get what is the current i mean actually it is not drain 2 it is should be source 2 sorry for that i will change it apply kcl to the source one node okay not uh, source two sorry source two node what do we will get ix plus gm2 into vgs2 plus uh, gmb2 into vbs2 these are all incoming currents right and what is the outgoing current the outgoing current is vx upon ro2 are you following what i am saying so we are applying kcl at the source to node i will change this okay so it is I, ix is the incoming current gm2 into vgs2 is the incoming current gmb2 into vbs2 is the incoming current right and uh, yeah is equal to outgoing current which is vx upon i'll use the font size now yeah so now uh, vgs2 is equal to minus vx and vbs2 is also equal to minus vx so what we do is we collect all the terms of vx together and ix together so what do we get over here ix is equal to vx times gm2 plus gm b2 plus vx upon ro2 correct and how can we write this expression same expression as we can write same expression as follows it's it can be written as vx divided by 1 upon gm2 plus gm b2 correct because if two resistance This is R parallel. We can write it as one upon R one plus one upon R two is equal to one upon R one plus R two. That means uh, here it is. You know, Vx voltage is common. So these are the two resistances, right? One resistance is this one upon Gm two into R uh, Gm B two, and other resistance is R O two. You see the equivalence over here, right? So we take Vx out, and inside the bracket we write one upon uh, you know divided by uh, one upon Gm two. Plus GMB2 parallel to RO2. Are you following what I'm saying over here? So your R RX seen at those terminals will be VX upon IX, which will be one upon GM2 plus uh, you know GMB2 parallel to RO2. So this is the exact expression if lambda 2 is not equal to zero. So we have successfully found out the value of RX, which is equal to Uh, one upon GM two plus GMB two parallel to the whole parallel 
equal to R O two. So I request you all to please. I mean, it, it's looking like this two resistance are in parallel, which is coming from this concept over here, right? So R X is this expression given by nine point three point one. Fine. And uh, if we consider lambda two is equal to zero, the exact expression will become R X is approximately equal to because R O two will disappear, right? If lambda two is zero, it's approximately equal. Equal to one upon GM two plus GM B two, right? Or we can consider approximately we we want to write R O two is very much higher as compared to one upon GM two plus GM B two. So even if our lambda two is not equal to zero, still we can write it as approximate expression. If lambda two is not equal to zero, will be approximately equal to R X approximately equal to one upon GM two plus GM B two, and the exact expression will also remain the same for. Lambda two is equal to zero. Okay, so what we have done so far, we have calculated the value of R X. Fine. So we'll stop today, right? So so far, what we have done, we are trying to derive the expression for the small signal voltage gain that is V out upon V in, and here we have splitted these two to, uh, separately, and we have found out the expression of R X. Fine. So in the next class, we will continue this derivation further. Uh, any doubt anyone in this